Oops. We're going to have a live fact checker join us uh, in Ana Maria, who's from the uh, El Detector, which is a Spanish language fact checking organization. But before we get there, I want to make sure that we establish some basic definitions uh, around fact checking and the terminology that we're going to be throwing around around it. Now, the first term, of course, is hallucination. Uh, we talked about AI uh, generate, generated uh, generative AI making things up. But um, we wanted to get to some of the key definitions of fact checking and its facts, opinions, misinformation, disinformation, and sourcing. And we'll start with facts. Um, well, facts are are basically um, statements that can be proved, that can be tested, that can be validated. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they're accurate, but a factual statement is uh, is something that you can check. It is trying to convey solid information that is grounded, that is sourced. Um, and again, I, I we can't always say that facts are are written right or wrong. This is essentially what fact checkers do for a living, which is decide which ones are uh, who's who's accurate, who's not, and who's somewhere in the mushy middle. Um, but that is what a factual statement is, as opposed to an opinion. Uh, and an opinion statement is, you know, is, is really a statement of belief. It's something that you feel that sounds right to you. Um, but um, one of the most interesting polls I've seen in recent years was a Pew Research Center survey that that really revealed how difficult it was for for us mere mortals to understand what the difference between an opinion and a uh, an opinion statement and a factual statement are because um what happens is if we believe in a an opinion that we might hear it it reinforces our belief to the point where we think of it as a fact as opposed to a factual statement which is something that may or may not be what you're what you're comfortable with so facts versus opinions. And, you know, uh, th th there's even the question I'll leave out there, which is, can can facts be biased? Oh, sure. And, um, and uh, you know, so I wouldn't take a fact as just a fact. I want to know what, what a fact gives us is enough information that we can go check it out for ourselves and look at for other sources to see if that verifies the information. A fa so big difference between a fact and a factual statement somebody trying to say something that sounds factual versus um an actual bona fide verified fact misinformation misinformation is kind of an overarching term um and again i think anna maria will have some good uh things to say about this as well but think of it as statements that are basically statements that are are obviously incorrect that are um um uh that are they may be intentional they may not be but it's an overarching term for all of this stuff that um is circulating and seems to be wrong and that the different the, the distinction between misinformation and disinformation disinformation is really a kind of misinformation that is circulated uh very deliberately it's intentional um people are are making a methodical effort to get this kind of misinformation in front of the audiences they want to see it and the, you know we're worried today about misinformation i would say policymakers are more concerned about disinformation which is the subset of misinformation that you know Russian hackers or bad actors uh, are using. So we're talking about that broader set of, let's call it innocent mistakes that AI makes. Uh, you know, as you said earlier, it's trying its best, but it doesn't mean it gets it right. And so the category that we want you to be really focused on in terms of reputational risk is misinformation, but disinformation is really more what's societally risky. 
Uh, and then finally, this is kind of a term of art in journalism that we use a lot, which is sourcing. What is sourcing and what is a source? Well, there are all kinds of things that can be a source. It might be something you hear from a person. It might be a database you stumble across. It may be a, a, a media report that uh, has lots of useful information. Um, the trick with sourcing is you're looking for information that is attributed in a way that you can see where it comes from and that you can also then go look for alternate information that may help you decide whether something is true or not. Um, in newsrooms, we often talk about a, a two source rule. Um, uh, a lot of that us were taught that in journalism schools at some point. And, you know, you have to have two sources before you can say that th this is true or not. And what we've learned over time is that that's actually a very simplistic and silly rule because uh, a lot of times when you try to reach out to two people to validate a piece of information, they may you may be walking into an echo chamber where people are, in fact, just trafficking, trafficking the same information and you're not actually getting two different sources takes. You're just hearing it repeated again. And so uh, there's lots of things that are great about sourcing, but you really have to make this a, a something that you can kind of make as a uh, the right way to say this, something that you can make a, as a lifestyle in a way that you can sort of go like when you hear something, you can immediately test your own uh, uh, thoughts and emotions on things and say, hey, I, I feel like I should go check this out. Maybe there's more information to be had on this before I go post this on the internet, send it to my friends and all of that other kind of stuff that leads to misinformation. Yeah, it's a, it's a habit of mine that a lot of journalists get uh, just because we're constantly being asked by our editors, how do you know that? Where did you, what is your source? Uh, is it, you know, if it's a confidential source, you often are required by organizations to share it with your editor but your editor alone, it depends on the organization.